Welcome to Bug Crowd University. My name is Jason Haddix, and today we'll be talking about Bug Crowd University. Your module trainers and authors for Bug Crowd University are currently Jason Haddix and JP Villanueva, at J Haddix and at Swagnito. Today we're going to cover what is BCU, Bug Crowd University, what are the structure of the modules inside of BCU, some bug bounty basics, how do the labs work for Bug Crowd University, some prerequisites, some tools, and then some resources for bug hunters to take home with them. So what is BCU? BCU has one goal, and it's to level up our crowd. What we did here at Bug Crowd was we analyzed the most critical bug classes that we were seeing on the platform from people like our elite hunters. And we also analyzed common newcomer questions and requests for feedback that we got through the platform as well. And we designed what we think is a good representation of modules that we're going to bring to you over the course of the next six months to help you level up your bug hunting. Now on the right hand side we have a visualization of how members move through our crowd. What you have at the top level of this funnel is the public crowd. People who come off the internet and try to hack on the public programs on the programs page of bug crowd. Now once you get some submitted vulnerabilities in bug crowd uh, you then move into the submitted crowd. And if these are valid non-duplicates and good bugs, they will get triaged. And then you'll move into what's called our ACS qualified crowd. Now there are some criteria and ACS stands for automated crowd selection. It's our algorithm that we use to choose the researchers that get private program invites. This algorithm includes factors such as average severity of your bugs, also activity and trust metrics that we build when you start working with bug crowd. Now, once you've gone through the public crowd, you've submitted some bugs, and you're quite possibly in the ACS qualified crowd, uh, you can also get into other tiers of our crowd by specializing in certain types of programs and also background checking yourself and ID verifying checking yourself. And these are options that you have to the platform. Now, Bug Crowd University is meant to sit at the top of this funnel to help people jettison themselves into the higher level of our crowd and be able to find critical bugs so they can do better bug hunting. So let's talk about the module layout for Bug Crowd University and what modules are gonna be released. So right now we're in phase one and we've broken up phase one into two sections, newcomer modules and intermediate modules. In phase one, we're launching introduction to Bug Crowd University, which you're watching right now, what makes a good submission, which will explain things like using Markdown and how to structure a submission for success, an introduction to Burp Suite, which will be a Burp Suite workshop designing and talking about the top level tools inside of Burp Suite, and a module on recon and discovery. And those will be our newcomer modules. In our intermediate modules, we'll go over access control testing and cross-site scripting. In next phases, and this can change, is threat modeling web applications for a newcomer module. And then we have several intermediate modules we plan to release over the next six months, such things as XML entity injection, web services testing, security misconfiguration bugs, and server-side request forgery. So now let's talk about how the modules are structured. Each module has a few sections. First, you'll have a brief introduction to the topic. Then you'll have where to find the bug. Then you'll move on to variants, examples, and other tips and tricks. Then we'll try to show you up-to-date tooling that helps you find these bugs. And then we'll go over labs that you can use to practice your skills in finding these bugs. And then we'll provide any auxiliary resources we think are pertinent to finding these bugs. Now we'll move on to what I call bug bounty basics. If you're brand new to Bug Crowd and you're a first time bug hunter, there's some stuff you need to know before you get started on the platform. What you can do is navigate to the bugcrowd.com webpage and go to the programs link at the top of the page. This will give you a tiled view of all of the public programs that Bug Crowd manages. All of these are open for hacking as long as you sign up with the researcher account. Once you sign up with the researcher account, you can land on one of these tiles and you can view what's called a program brief, like the one that you see in front of you. Now here are the important things to note on your program brief are the targets, the payout reward, and the brief rules itself. So we're gonna talk a little bit about these. Here you can see that we're looking at a brief for Tesla. 
the Tesla has a reward range for $100 to $10,000 per vulnerability. They outline what they think are important bugs and the guidelines to follow to report bugs through their bug bounty program. Now we'll move on to talking about targets. Targets are the things you can actually hack inside of a program. Targets are represented on the brief page, both targets that are in scope and explicitly out of scope. When you look at the right here, you'll see Tesla has many targets in scope, and a lot of them have an asterisk next to them. What that means is that if you have a top level domain like tesla.com, any subdomain, if that asterisk is there, is also in scope something like admin.tesla.com or maybe help.tesla.com. Also at the bottom of the page, you can see the explicitly out of scope targets. These are targets that you specifically do not have permission to test on or do any type of security research on. Each program might also have their own unique areas of the brief. For instance, there are such things as reward tables and focus areas. Sometimes these, these tables can show you where to focus the most for each individual client. For instance, these are the type of bugs that Tesla cares the most about on their bounty brief. Remote code execution, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, CSERF, and a host of other bugs. These are the ones that will get triaged the quickest and also paid out the best. Now let's talk about how labs work in BugCrowd University. Now there are hundreds of open source labs and CTF challenges out there on the internet for security now. Luckily we live in a time where that has actually happened. So what BugCrowd University aims to do is not to recreate a whole bunch of these labs for you to take on your own, but we will aim to curate the best ones which we think will help you get an introduction and depth in each module. So that means if we're looking at insecure direct object references, we're going to go out there and find things from damn vulnerable web app and webgoat and BWAP and a whole bunch of other open source vulnerable web applications for learning. And we're gonna tell you which ones you need to take to get a good exposure to the topic. Now, this means that you will be setting up your own labs in usually what are virtual environments. So we're going to have some precursor software for you to install later on. Each module will also have what's called a lab guide. A lab guide will include which vulnerable applications you should be setting up maybe helpful installation tips for these vulnerable applications, and which specific labs inside of that whole curriculum of open source learning that you should focus on for this one module to get the best possible exposure to the topic. Now let's talk about prerequisites for this type of training. So when you get into any type of security role, especially a web security role, there's really no right path to becoming um, a hacker. There are, however, some areas in which you will need to be familiar in to understand the module topics if you're starting from scratch. We recommend Code Academy courses to get quickly spun up in this area. So before doing BCU, you should have either a familiarity with these things or have taken these modules. The ones that we think are the most useful are learning HTML, learning JavaScript, the make a website content, the learn the command line content, and the deploy the command line content, as well as learn SQL and learn Python. Now this is seven modules of Code Academy courses for you to learn either concurrently to BugCrowd University or to learn before you start BugCrowd University. Having solid web chops and command line chops and being able to script and deploy websites is common currency for being able to do security testing on these types of sites and it will do nothing but help you along the way. Now let's talk about our core tool set when we get into bounty hunting. So one of our core tools will be an interception proxy. And in the interception proxy world, there are two options. The first one, which I will be demoing in this course, uh, first will be Port Swigger's Burp Suite. Burp Suite is an interception proxy, but really it's a suite of tools, not just an interception proxy. It allows you to trap traffic that comes from your browser and modify it on the fly. It allows you to log all your web requests and see what they've sent across the wire. Then it also allows you to replay and automate attacks against websites when you're doing security testing, as well as the ability to scan and decode and a plethora of other features that this tool suite uh, gives you. 
The other interception proxy or security testing tool suite that we will get to know is OWASP Zap Proxy. And it is very similar. It has functions for trapping requests, for viewing all the traffic that goes from your browser to the server. And it has helpful tools and extensions to security test for you as well as it's open source and free. Another tool we're going to need is a browser. You can use either Firefox or Chrome for Bug Crowd University. There are some useful extensions for these browsers. The most common one that you're going to need is a proxy switching extension. It allows you to have a quick button in the upper right hand corner to turn on and off uh, your browser pointing to your interception proxy. So for Chrome or Firefox, a Foxy Proxy is one of these options. Some other proxy extensions I use are Built With and Wappalyzer, which allow you to fingerprint the server stack of the application you're testing. Open multiple URLs, which will allow you to paste a whole bunch of URLs in a box and it'll open them as tabs. Copy tab URLs, which will copy all your tabs that are open and give you all the links for them. Snap Links Plus, which allows you to drag a box over a page and every hyperlink it sees will open as a new tab and link gopher, which parses out all of the URLs on the page into a list for you. So we mentioned earlier about virtual machines. The reason why we're gonna need virtual machines is because many of our open source software labs are going to be ISOs or virtual machine files. So we'll need a player of some sort to play them and access them. VirtualBox and VMware Player are great options for this. In addition to having some virtual machine uh, playing software, we're also going to need uh, some type of Linux server to stand up the web applications that aren't ISOs or completely contained machines. And so you can normally do that on something like Ubuntu or Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a flavor of Linux that has many security tools already built into it. So it lends itself very well to training and doing offensive security testing of any type and usually has a lot of the tools that the industry uses updated pretty, pretty regularly and installed and working with each other, which can take a lot of burden off of people when they're creating a testing machine. Now, for the purposes of this, you're gonna be using this machine to host websites. So an Ubuntu install is probably uh, just as good and you'll probably learn more administering your own you know, server, but uh, Kali Linux is also something that a lot of people use. So let's talk a little bit about resources for this course. So for this course, there are two main resources that you can follow along with in every lab. One is the OWASP testing guide and another is the Web Application Hackers Handbook. And in each module, what we'll do is we'll call out which chapters and which sections of the testing guide that you can follow along with with the content that we're giving you for that module. Many consider these to be the two de facto hacking resources for web applications, and we'll continue to add to these as we go along. But for right now, we're going to use these to guide the course along. We'll tell you where to start reading and where to stop reading. The other resource we want to point out here is, is a project by OWASP called the OWASP Vulnerable Web Applications Directory Project. This project keeps track of most or many of the industry's vulnerable apps created for learning. It has three sections, online apps, which are things that are hosted on the internet for you that you can just go to in a browser and start doing these example hacks or looking at applications that are purposely vulnerable. Offline apps, which are applications that you need to install yourself and stand up the web server yourself and then virtual machines and ISOs, which can be instituted or instrumented through a virtual machine software. When applicable, we'll also give you a list of people to follow who are very knowledgeable on the topic. For instance, we have a list here, a Twitter list that you could follow for mobile application hackers when we launch a mobile application module. We'll have these for people who are good at cross-site scripting or other types of bugs if we've identified that. If it doesn't apply to the module, something very general, uh, we won't have this, uh, but I think it's very neat to add these type of lists and give this kind of uh, resource to people so that they can follow along in the advents of each module. Lastly, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to watch the course and experience the content that we've created for you. Uh, we really value the researchers here at BugCrowd, so if you have any ideas or you wanna contribute content, this whole idea is open source and you can put in a GitHub issue and add ideas for content and we will most likely update the course to, to add said things to the courses and the modules. So uh, please enjoy and we're happy to have you here at BugCrowd University.